Hey guys, it's Fish and I'm back. Uh, this time with a new series uh, with Fish Teachers and today I'm going to be teaching you uh, the early game of Subnautica. So when you first get in, uh, it can be a little bit jarring. There's not a lot of tutorial in this game. Uh, so I've taken it upon myself to make a bit of a tutorial series. Uh, what to do when you first get in and uh, how best to spend your time so that you're not, you know, just wandering around aimlessly, you can get a good start, so then you can start seeing the rest of the game. Because this is a survival game, uh, and you start off with almost nothing. So let's get into it, and I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you the game. So I'm going to go with the survival version of the game because that throws in hunger and thirst, as well as oxygen and health. Um, you can play on three other modes. You got freedom mode, where you've only got oxygen and health. And I have seen that played. Um, you just don't have to worry about catching fish and trying to make water for yourself. Um, hardcore, I uh, don't know if I like that one because not only do you only have one life, so when you die to that Reaper, uh, which is one of the bigger uh, mobs in the game, uh, you're just going to have to start again. And you don't get uh, oxygen alerts, so if you stay under too long, uh, it won't even tell you. Uh, and creative, so you don't have to worry about health, oxygen, water, food, or anything. You can just build stuff and just see what it'll look like. Alright guys, let's jump in with survival, and we'll get started on Fish Teachers. Well, hey guys, and hopefully you enjoyed that little cutscene at the start. Um, that's that's new from when I last played, so um, hopefully you enjoyed that. It gives you a little bit of uh, context as to what's going on. So when we first get in, we've got to pick up our fire extinguisher and just hit our right-click button and to put out the fire. Otherwise, we'll die. Survivor, great job not dying. To <laughs> assist you in further survival in emergency situations, you have been issued this personal data assistant. The interface visible now will organize your inventory, display currently available construction blueprints, and holds other valuable information. Please take a moment to familiarize yourself with it. Okay, so you're in your PDA mode, and, the and this is the first thing you're going to see um, once the game is loaded up and you put out that fire. And so the first screen, or the left-hand tab, is your inventory. And the inventory is a lot bigger than when I first started playing this game, but they've, they've made some things take up more space. So in the end, I think it's either net, uh, net neutral or even a loss uh, as to inventory size. You've got slots here, so if your feet, uh, your body, your head, uh, two augment, slots so one of them is your compass and the other one is your temperature sensor and i can't remember what that one is that might be a new one so that's that one we won't have to worry about too much especially if we're doing uh, a very early playthrough uh, the next tab along we've got our blueprints so you start off with a lot of uh, blueprints that will some of them useful some of them not so things like your hatch or your building materials so these first five uh, and these ones here, and these ones all the way up to about there. So that second row and about the first three of the third row, not really that useful uh, to you. The fabricator is useful if you need to make a second fabricator, and you're going to build things within that fabricator. So all it does is it takes an item, and it creates another item off those. So it's sort of Star trek in a way, if you've ever watched those series. Um, 
there's other suits you can wear so for instance your radiation suit now there is radiation in some areas of the game but we're not going to worry too much about radiation early on because i don't really see it um, that's a bit of a mid to late game item you don't really need it early on uh, your still suit um, that's a really good one to have but uh, again it's a bit later or it's more of a mid game type thing where it'll actually reclaim moisture from your body uh, and put water into your inventory and you can drink that water so it it really reduces, I think it reduces your water consumption down to about 25% water per day. So that's actually really, really good, as long as you consume the water. Uh, we don't have to worry about that. Bulkheads or aquariums or signs. Uh, medical kit fabricator, that's new since my last playthrough of this game. Uh, essentially, it just makes a med kit for you every 30 minutes. So that's actually really, really useful, and I really like that. Um, you've got a communications relay, and that's another new one. Uh, you'll just occasionally get messages, and I guess that's from another survivor, maybe. Uh, I did get a message on my other game uh, in the brief time I was playing to prep for this uh, playthrough, and this, well, not playthrough, but this uh, Fish Play, uh, Fish Teaches You series, uh, and I did get one message, and all he was talking about was that I'd been underwater a little bit too long. So... Um, a bit of a strange one, and that's what you start with. Now there are other blueprints that you can get a bit later on, uh, and but I'll go into them a bit later. Uh, logs, yeah, so that's just telling you about the stuff that the PDA has told you about. You can take pictures, so you press F11, you'll take a screenshot of whatever you're looking at, and that will upload to Steam or to whichever folder uh, you have the game installed in. And a data bank, it'll just tell you about... Detecting increased local radiation mm. levels. Trend is consistent with ongoing degradation of the Aurora's dark matter drive core due to damage sustained during collision. Continuing to monitor. Okay, cool. So I probably should go into what the backstory of this game is if you haven't already played it. So essentially you are the, well, I thought you were the only survivor, but you start getting messages, so maybe you're not. Uh, you are a, a, a survivor of, uh, of a vessel called the Aurora and you saw it explode uh, when you were looking up in that little cutscene before. Um, what you'll, and it's obviously quite an advanced uh, race of people that you are a member of because uh, you've got your PDA and that will then help you build things that you need to survive in the environment, uh, you know, just from what is in the environment. So it takes certain things and just atomically breaks them down and makes other things. So um, it'll tell you a little bit about what's going on Oh yeah, so there's little background stories on what the Aurora vessel was actually all about. Uh, your life pod, and that's what we've woken up in, and I'll talk about that um, a little bit shortly. Uh, there's some more stuff. It'll just tell you about the suit that you're wearing. Uh, it just tells you informa the information on the side, uh, the bottom left-hand side here. And just a little, yeah, that's nothing. So you press tab to get rid of your PDA. You can press tab again to bring it back again. And you're going to want to, to see your inventory from time to time. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is not have that in your hand. So if you press 1, that'll bring out, it'll automatically put that fire extinguisher into your inventory. And so you're going to want to get rid of that um, early on. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is walk up to this red um, storage container here and left click it. And that's going to open it up. Uh, there's going to be some useful stuff like some flares. I don't really see them that useful, to be honest. But the filtered water and the, the nutrient block is actually really, really good. Uh, so you want to hold shift, left click on those items, and that will shift it across to your inventory from storage. Um, I think you can drag as well, but I find it quite inefficient if you can just hold down shift. And don't press escape like I always do. Um, you're just going to want to press tab again to close that. Uh, now, there is power attached to this... Um, life pod that you're in. Uh, first thing we'll do is we'll go into this medical fabricator kit and just grab that medical and something's bugged out with it because it's shutting onto itself. Um, the fabricator. So the fabricator is what I was talking about before. It's that item that turns uh, things from the environment into items that you can use. So for starters, you want to use your resources and having a look at your basic stuff like titanium um, you can turn it into titanium ingots to build more advanced stuff, silicon rubber, glass, and so on and so forth. So if you're going to play the game, I'll let you have a look through there, but that's your basic building blocks. You have advanced materials, but they're very, very advanced, and uh, it'll take you quite a while. You'll, you'll be all over the game by the time you run into blood oil and making benzene, you know. Uh, and you've got electronics, so copper, wire, uh, batteries, 
uh, power cells and that kind of thing. So if you have a look, uh, if I leave uh, this and I have a look, that's a power cell right there. This is a charging one. You don't really see much charging from these at the moment. Uh, so first things first, uh, there's not a lot you can do in here and that's that communicator relay but it's damaged for the moment. So the first thing you want to do is come out and it's telling me to eat something so um, it's probably a good time to talk to you about uh, the different bars. So you've got your oxygen bar which is obviously going to deplete while you're underwater. You can breathe within your pod or if you're outside the water. Uh, you've got your health bar there. You've obviously lost some health because that little um, panel hits you in the head. And you've got your food. So now that my food is dropping down, I'm not going to waste my food, so I'm going to actually wait until I'm under 25% because that nutrient bar is going to give me 75% of my food. Uh, you also need to keep track of your water. Your water uh, is going to deplete. Um, I'm not 100% sure of the uh, rate, but I think it's about that full 100% bar will go down over the course of about a day and a half. So you just click, left click that... Um, escape pod hatch and that's going to take you down into the area that you're in. Uh, so it's a lot safer here than it was when I last respawned in. So as you can see my oxygen is not depleting while I'm above the water and you've got your escape hatch there. It's also got a little beacon there so if you ever swim away from it you know which direction to go to get back to it. So it's actually quite handy. Uh, you can also enter the hatch from the top if you just left click to get to the top and then uh, it'll climb on down. But I, I always find it easier just to go from the bottom one instead. Now that was a fish that just swum past um, and if you can get close enough to them uh, and left click on them, you can then grab them and that's, that's good. Um, they're going to put it into your hot bar first but uh, if you just click that hot bar uh, again, it's not. It's going to get rid of that from your what you're holding. So that was a peeper that I just picked up. So if we go into our inventory here, I've picked up a peeper, and he's worth 18 food and minus seven water at first. So I better go to the top. Yep, there we go. So uh, that peeper is going to give me a, a food gain, but it's also going to give me a water loss and so I don't really want that so what I can do is I can actually go to my fabricator and go to sustenance now cooked food and it'll cook my peeper and it is actually a really really good food source of peepers they're probably the best one that's out there uh, so I would stick to them so if I have a look at it now that it's cooked it's worth plus 32 food and it's worth plus 5 water but over time so over about 2 minutes I think it uh, slowly deteriorates and then over five minutes it's gone so it's, it goes rotten and you actually lose health of food and you lose H2O and I think you lose health as well for eating bad food so you don't want to be doing that you want to stick to only eating it when it's cooked and I'm actually gonna you can see it's already dropped it's already dropped to plus 31 now instead of 32 and down to plus 4 water and I'm gonna leave that in my inventory just to show you that deterioration but what we'll do is we will eat this nutrient block so you just left click on it and that will eat that food for you and now we're back up to 97 percent now how much water will we get from the filter water plus 20 so let's just consume some of that to keep our water nice and high okay so one of the biggest things you're going to want to do in this game is start collecting and the first thing you're going to want to have to you're going to want to collect is titanium because titanium is pretty much the building block of everything. And you can have a look over there, that's your Aurora ship. Thank you. All right, so that's the Aurora ship that you cr uh, crashed uh, that you were originally in. And you can go and you can explore some of it. Not a huge amount of it is open up, but you can explore some of it. Now, what have we got over there? I think that's just a, beast, a piece of coral. Yes. All right, so the first thing you want to do is you want to collect metal. Uh, and metal's actually really, really easy to collect, he says, as he can't actually find any. 
uh, just lying on the ground. Normally you're going to find pieces of the ship that have broken off uh, and you just want to make sure that your, your oxygen stays nice and high. There we go, there's a piece of uh, the Aurora that we can then left click and that picks that up for us. And the beautiful part of that, oh look at all that, there's heaps. Uh, it's going to take up four slots in my inventory and I will show you. So you can see that's taking up four slots of that middle salvage, but it actually takes, it actually creates four slots of um, titanium. Whoa, did he just disappear? Magic fish. Yoink, yoink. No, missed him, missed him. Okay, you want to try and grab as many peepers as you can, or food in general. So you can see I've now, I'm, I'm a bit lost. Oh, there we go, there's my beacon, and I just swim back to it. So if we get our oxygen back up and we have a look at our inventory, we can see that that peeper is now worth 28 food and plus one H2O because it's now old. And it'll just keep getting worse and worse until it'll actually make you sick to eat it. So don't, don't eat that stuff. So we'll go in and we'll have a look at what that titanium uh, or that scrap metal turns into. So from the scrap metal it says I can make four titanium, so I just click that and that will give me four titanium well, or put titanium pieces into my inventory. And it is the basic building block of almost everything. So if we have a look down here, the first thing you want to go and make is an oxygen tank. Now I've got the titanium, I only need two for that, but I need glass. And to make glass, I'm going to need quartz. Okay, so uh, we'll get out of this and we'll go out and we'll try and find quartz. And Finding quartz at night time is actually the easiest because it's this little crystalline structure and it actually glows at night. So you want to collect as much of this as you can while you're out as well because it's actually very, very useful. You can never find enough quartz. You always seem to be short of quartz. So I only needed two for my oxygen tank. What was that? A creature egg? That's actually a very new item. I haven't ever seen that before. Yeah, yeah where'd I go? There it is. There's my... So we'll go up. Because at the moment we can only hold 45. So we take our quartz and we make glass. Uh, so two pieces of quartz makes glass. So then we go into our equipment and we make our oxygen tank. Uh, that's really good because now when I have that in my inventory I actually get another 30 uh, seconds of breathable air, which is really, really good. And there are upgrades a bit later on that will give you even more uh, stuff, even more oxygen. So the next thing we want to do is we want to make, and we'll use our fabricator as our bit of a um, bit of a, a bit of a um, indicator. Is we want to make a knife. Survival knife is good, it just protects you from certain things, but we need silicon rubber. We've got the titanium, we just need a piece of silicon rubber. What do we need for silicon rubber? Because that's a basic building material. Well, we need two creep vine seed clusters. And so they've changed that from when I first played this game, because it used to be that quartz made silicon rubber as well. Now, uh, you don't. Now you make, um, you make it from the seed clusters. Now the problem with the seed clusters is that it's actually dangerous creatures at the sea clusters. So what you want to do is you want to swim out a little bit, just head to the back end of the ship and keep going, and eventually you'll run into this. So this is a little sea cluster farm type thing. It's not really a farm, but that's what you can sort of use it as. So just pick up items as you're going. Not too many because you don't want to fill your inventory because these seed clusters do take up a lot of room. Um, but we want to go and find our seed clusters. Uh, now the, the problem with seed clusters is that there's normally a, a very dangerous creature. So you can see that there it's like this elongated shark. And it's not very nice. And it actually does want to eat you. It's called a stalker. And so you've just got to try your best to avoid that. And while I'm here, you can see these these weird looking guys that look like a, a bit of a sack of air. And they're called air sacks, funnily enough. 
and you can turn them into that filtered water back at your base. So you want to try and pick those guys up early on as much as you can as well, because water is going to be a killer for you if you don't, if you're not proactive about picking that kind of stuff up. So I'll just pick up this, the cl seed clusters. I'm now full, unfortunately, uh, because if we go to the top here, and I'll show you my inventory. Uh, they take up four slots each, so I'm, I'm not a big fan of this change. It used to be one slot, now it's four, but um, that's what the, the game designers have decided to do, so that's what they're doing. And there's not a lot we can really do about that, so we'll just play the game as we go. Um, so if you see a chance to grab a fish or grab um, some water or something, do it. Um, I, actually, I can't pick anything up at the moment, can I? Because my inventory is full. But if you see an opportunity, pick them up. Because otherwise, uh, you're going to constantly play, be playing catch up with your food and your water supply, and you're never actually going to achieve anything. So, you know, quartz. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm full on. Uh, so, you, you constantly want to be picking things up as you're moving along. It makes the game move a little bit faster. Um, you don't need to really build a base at this stage, you just want to. Um, you don't really need to build a base because uh, it's it's really just a waste of resources this early on. You can do everything in this little uh, escape hatch of yours. Local radiation mm. readings exhibit characteristics consistent with total degradation at the Aurora's dark matter drive core. A quantum detonation will occur with a probability of 85.5%. Advise observing a one kilometer safety range. And I will do that, because if you go anywhere near it, it will tell you radiation detected. So you don't need to worry about that too much. Just don't go near the Aurora early on. Not until you've got that radiation suit that I was talking about. So we want to make water from that air sac that I was telling you about. So um, just go into your sustenance, water, and then filtered water. And that's going to create a bottle of filtered water for you. Now, it's only going to give you uh, 20 water, but 20 water is better than no water. So the next thing we want to do is we want to make, not lubricant, we want to make silicon rubber. So we just need two clusters of um, seed, uh, creep vine seed clusters. And we're making two of these because what we're going to make is we're going to make some fins. And that just means that we move a bit faster underwater. So not only now do we have more water, um, more air, we have faster movement as well, so that should help out a fair bit. And what I'm going to do is, um, if you hover over an item and you press a 1 through 5 for this hotbar, you can actually assign it to a hotbar. And it doesn't look like you can assign a first aid kit to a hotbar. So, but if you wanted to assign, say, that, or if you click it again, then it'll go away. I'm going to put the fire extinguisher away because I don't really see the point at the moment. Um, and use this storage, use it for your own purposes, because you don't need a lot of this stuff while you're out. So uh, don't let it take up any of your inventory space if you don't need it. Now these things I do, now that's old, um, so there's no worry about that. Now with fresh fish, I would recommend holding fresh fish and don't cook them until late, until you really do need them, because um, once you've cooked them, they start to decay. If you don't cook them, they stay exactly the way they are. Uh, it's really a really weird system, um, and I think it's a bit of a bug, but uh, it's a bug that I will take advantage of. All right, cool. So the other thing you want to try and do, instead of using air sacs for your water, you want to look into getting bleach. And so to make bleach, you need salt, and you need common coral. And so that's the next thing we're going to go out and we're going to go and get. So did we make a knife? We didn't make a knife. So let's make a knife, actually before we go out because that's um we can't actually get uh, uh, coral samples until we have a knife and so we need to make what do we need to make a knife I think it was silicon rubber yep it was so let's make uh, we need two to make a, a silicon rubber okay so that was a mistake that's alright We'll still continue to go out. We'll grab that air sac. I don't know why it puts in your hotbar. Why I would want to carry a fish like this the whole time, who knows? But that's the way that the game does it, so that's the way we do it. 
Uh, so we'll just pop out of the water quickly just to make sure um, we aren't quite going in the right direction. I think there is still a creep vine uh, cluster over this side as well. Pretty sure. I'm 99% sure that either direction that you head, you're going to get a creep vine cluster. If not, I guess I will just cut this out of the video and bring you back once I am there. All right, so there is a creep vine cluster over there. Now guys, these will be longer videos because, or the fish teachers videos will be longer videos because um, in a lot of cases there's going to be a lot of things to cover so uh, we will make them a bit longer than my normal you know, couple of minute videos. I think that's about all we can hold on to. No, there we go. Warning, 30 seconds of oxygen okay. remaining. And you can see the little flippers. One of the few games where you'll actually see your body. Which I always found quite amusing. Okay, there's our little... Um, Now I'm not seeing the actual beacon. That's it. Whoa. Now, bye bye Aurora. Ah, yeah, there it is. And so now there's radiation over that, that area, so we don't want to go anywhere near that. So I'll quickly just grab some titanium out of this for my... Uh, for my knife. And we'll make ourselves a piece of silicon rubber, and that'll get cut into the handle of our uh, knife. I figure that's how it works anyway. Now I'll go in... And I will make the knife uh, one of the first on my hotbar because it's useful. And I keep hitting escape when it's not escape to get out. It's uh, okay. So we're a little full on that, but that's okay. Now that we have a knife, we can go down and we can get ourselves some coral. So there's two types of coral. There's the coral shell plate. You hit right click just to to hit it. No, that's not the right stuff. What is going on? There we go. And we get a piece of it. And that's common coral. And there's a second type of coral. There's this stuff over here, the purple stuff. The table coral. And that's useful for its own purposes as well, but that'll, that'll come a bit later. So you don't desperately need that right now. Uh, what you can also do is you can break these little outcrops and they'll give you... Uh, resources normally, lime, titanium from the limestone, but sometimes you'll get copper as well. I'm just going to pick up a bit of quartz here as well, and then we'll swim back, and I will make... Oh, no, I, will, I was going to make some bleach, but we haven't actually got any salt yet. So what you're looking for on salt is a bit of a, uh, yeah, a, a white cluster of uh, cubes just hanging out on the floor of the ocean. Why there's salt on the floor of the ocean, I'm not 100% sure, but that's that's how this game works. And as you can see, I'm dehydrating a little bit. That's okay. I've got plenty of water. So I'll just, I'll just drink both of those and we're good to go. There we go. So there's a bit of, uh, there's a bit of salt right there. That's exactly what it looks like. It's a little cluster of salt cubes. So we'll swim back to our little ship and we'll make that bleach. Now, I think we're coming close to the end. There's only one or two more things that I want to talk to you about. Um, because these are the main resources you're going to be using early on. So you can see I've got salt uh, and common coral. So we'll use a piece of that. We'll make bleach. And then we can go into our sustenance and make a piece of disinfected, disinfected water. 
and that's going to give you um, 50, 40, 40 water when you drink it, so double. So it's objectively better. All right, the other thing I want to talk about is, uh, I, I did briefly mention it, uh, the base building. Uh, I wouldn't recommend building a base early on. Everything you can do in this place, uh, I wouldn't recommend you needing to do anything until you start, and we'll get a little bit more, um, get another medical kit. Uh, until you start moving into uh, the necessity of going to the zones that are a bit further away to go and farm things like silver, things like uh, uranium and the other rarer materials, um, I wouldn't recommend building bases. Um, what you can do is you can build bases over there with storage containers and things like that and that's going to help you, uh, you know, save all those items over there and you can just transfer, transport them across. Uh, the other thing you want to do is you want to try and start um, working towards building a sea moth. Now, a sea moth, um, early on in the game, there is, or there used to be, resource, uh, little nodes that you could scan, and they would give you information based on um, building the sea moth. And once you get five of those, you could build a sea moth, which is a little miniature submarine. Uh, if you want to find out about that, um, I'll link the making of a sea moth in the description below and what that'll do is that'll just help you um, you know move a little bit faster you don't lose your oxygen when you're in it and things like that so what we've got over here is we've got a little okay so these guys you want to stay away from them because if I go near them they're gonna punch out those little yellow things and when they explode they hurt a lot so don't be anywhere near them when they explode Okay, we've got a little, uh, a little bit of a wreck type thing here. Um, now, these weren't in the game when I first started, so I haven't actually explored a wreck before, so I don't really want to um, ruin that by doing it in the game now. Um, I, I guess it's pieces of the Aurora that have broken off, and you can explore them for uh, items. Now, whether they give you the fragments or not, I'm not 100% sure, because I'm not actually seeing from... I'm not actually seeing the fragments that give you the blueprints at the moment. So what I'll do is I'll go off and I'll figure out where these blueprints are and I'll bring you back shortly. Alright guys, I'll see you soon. Alright guys, um, I'm back and I've been searching for quite a while and I haven't found a single sea moth fragment. But I will show you what fragments look like. They just look like this. They look like little vaults. Uh, little white vaults. And you can't pick them up, but you can... You never used to be able to. Now you can push them around. can't push this one around. I did find one I could push around. Um, you got to scan them. So you got to build what's known as a scanner. Uh, and you can get that in the tool section of your um, fabricator. Um, I found a little bit of a bug over there. Uh, a little bit of a building that didn't quite spawn in. And it's above the water. And I also found, and you can see here, that my module has drifted off into the middle of nowhere. So it never used to drift. Now it looks like it drifts quite a bit. Uh, which is a little bit annoying uh, and it looks like fragments have really become quite a rare item. Um, you know, some of the stuff that you used to start with you don't start with now and you've got to collect the fragments for. Some of the stuff that you um, used to be able to find fragments for almost everywhere, uh, you can't do that anymore. Um, so it's night time now and you have a look uh, down here and you can sort of see that the quartz over there sort of glows uh, so it's a lot easier to find. Same with the acid mushrooms down there so if you're looking for acid mushrooms it's just these things you can just quickly pick them up it's pretty it's pretty easy and there's the beacon but uh, all good things must come to an end and I think uh, we've come to a point where I think you've got the basic idea of how to get started in this game uh, what to avoid, where to focus your efforts uh, at the start, um, and later on you'll you'll do other things. So see, I can push that around. It's really I don't know if I like that. It used to be in one spot, so maybe building is useful now. Uh, but anyway, uh, guys, thanks for joining me. Um, hopefully, you found this to be informative, and if you have, please give a thumbs up. Um, it really does help the channel, but it also helps me know that uh, you're enjoying this content, and this is the kind of stuff that you'd like to see in the future.
Um, if you enjoyed this, um, I would recommend that you look at my other series, so my Arc Survival Evolved single player and multiplayer, uh, Transistor or The Wolf Among Us, uh, all of which are fantastic games and I'm really, really enjoying uh, bringing all of those to you. Um, and if you enjoy any of these, um, yeah, no. it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm leaving anyway. But thanks, game. Uh, so if you like this or any of those, um, consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, not only does it help me with my subscriber count, but it also helps you because it means that my videos will make it into your YouTube mailbox every single day and you won't miss a single video from Fish Gaming. All right, guys, thanks for joining me. I've been Fish. This has been Fish Teaches You Subnautica. And I'll catch you next time.